People come onto your website to read the content, not to study your pretty colour scheme or drool over your illustrations. You therefore better make sure the reading experience is great. Your aim for every single site is to make your content legible and readable. Welcome, this is episode 26. It's don't make these typography mistakes, make your content easier to read and more legible. A great quote um, from information architects who are really experienced design guys. They say, 95% of information on the web is written language. It is only logical to say that a web designer should get good training in the main discipline of shaping written information, in other words, typography. That was written in 2006, but it still holds very much true today in 2014. Although we've got different content types, such as video and audio, more apparent on the web, typography and type and is still the most common content on the web by far. So the first mistake that I generally see is leading or line height, as it's known in CSS. If we look at the example on the right hand side, it's just much, much harder to read. With the space between the lines on the left, it's just much easier to read, a lot more legible. It's easier on the eye, and you're just going to communicate your language much better by using that. It's very, very easily solved in CSS by simply using the line height property. And in the first example, we've got 24 pixels, or if you're using M's, 1.5 M's. And that increases the legibility dramatically, and is a really, really quick fix for any site. Number two is contrast. The most contrast that's possible is having white text on a black background or black text on a white background. Black text on a white background is sometimes said too much contrast there, and it's actually harder to read according to some studies. What I would suggest is using a darker grey. And my little twist is to add a slight colour or variation in with the brand colours. It's hardly noticeable, but if we look in the a uh, colour picker from Photoshop there. We've just got a slight blue in the type rather than a, a dark navy, rather than a complete uh, kind of boring um, grey. So that's my little tip there is to add a slight twist into the colours and not just have grey. Typeface. Uh, there are literally thousands of typefaces available as I'm sure you are aware. Jason Santamaria who's a really uh, well known experienced um, designer and it experienced in fonts and typography his advice is to learn a few fonts and know them very well rather than trying to learn loads and spreading your wings too far when choosing a typeface the absolute first question is can I read this and is it legible that question comes way before nonsense like is it pretty and does it suit our style functionality comes before form every time when you're dealing with a typeface can I read this well and is it legible is the first question that you must ask. My personal favourites um, when dealing with web fonts are Adele, Jubilat, Muzu and they're all from Typekit. Not enough space um, and just cramped designs this is another mistake I see quite regularly. If you look at the example on the right hand side it's just a lot lot easier to read. I've also increased the line height there and between those two things of giving it spacing between the top and the left margin and giving the line height just makes that completely transforms that text. It just looks ugly on the left, it's hard to read, there's no spacing, no padding, it's just a bad, bad reading experience. So that's a thing to notice, have ample room in your margins and you can also notice the line height there. General sizing, this example is, uh, that text is, is just from the iWatch which has just come out yesterday. And that is from the next web. And as you can see, that's quite a large typeface there. And then the next example is from Forbes. And again, it's a large, large typeface. And that's one of the mistakes I see in, uh, certainly in my designs, I'm increasing the size of the font. It just makes for a much, much easier reading experience. And it's certainly nothing to worry about the fold. The fold is really not a problem when it comes to web design now. So make your fonts and your font size just increase that much bigger. It makes it a lot more legible. How many characters per line is a very common question uh, asked and there's contradicting um, studies on this but certainly in my my experience I wouldn't have uh, more than 100 characters per line is my advice. 
any more than that and it makes it really really hard to read and that's just the kind of baseline it's no more than 100 even sometimes 50 or 60 is enough uh, characters per line for very large monitors you can easily restrict the length by using the max width property in css that's really really easy to do justified text um, maybe for page titles just maybe personally i've never used that justified text it just doesn't look right and it's really really hard to read but i would never use justified text for body content it's just so hard to read and the spacing makes it really, really illegible if you can look at the example there the spacing it just there's no balance to that text your eyes are jumping between the spaces and it's just you can't concentrate on the text so i wouldn't use justified text for your body content maybe maybe just for your titles and headings a pro tip <laughs> um, custom fonts may have a harsh edge on them sometimes and you can sort that if you're using um, a webkit browser by using the webkit font smoothing anti-aliased but more common and across uh, all browsers you can use a text shadow there 001 pixel and the transparent text shadow normally sorts that very harsh edge seen on some web fonts and don't worry if you've got a fancy effect on your text shadow as you can see there you can use multiple text shadows simply by using the comma okay that's it for this um, short video i hope that's been helpful and please comment below keep up with the shows uh, the best way is probably on twitter my personal account is johnny mac and there's the web payload account there's also the rss feed and there is also traditional email which is a great way to keep up with the shows thanks